Hi Stampers, this is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. Today we're going to be working on this adorable little box. I had showed you guys, I posted a picture of this little note card box we're going to make. And this one I actually did in the peony something um, paper. But it opens up. And then there's little note cards inside. And I'm gonna do another one in a different kind of paper because I thought I would show you um, how versatile this design can be and the different looks you can get just by switching up the designer series paper. So let me bring you down to my desk. So here we are on my desk. Like I said, this is the little box. It has six little note cards in it. Um, and they open up. And of course you could stamp inside. And then once you have the, you know, bring the ribbon around and tie the bow once, then it just slides off and on. So, super easy. I know you guys hate making bows and this is a hard one to put on the tool. So um, just make a simple bow and then slide it off and on. Page 83. This was the designer series paper I used on the first one. And it's got this great little flower, but that's gonna require its own video. A little complicated, not bad once you see it, but this is the paper that was used on this box. It's on page 83. And then this is the stamp set that goes with it. And of course it's got some dies. You know, you have to keep an eye out for these little save 10% things because they're, I think they're a little bit hidden in this catalog, but they even carried over some of the bundles that were in our last catalog and continued them at the 10% off. So watch for those little symbols. As I said, we're going to do a different one. This time I'm going to use this ornate garden suite. And we're going to use this paper down here on page 65. And this is this, what we call the suite. And what it is is two different stamp sets, two different sets of dies, and then the embellishments and the paper and everything. You can order everything, like the whole ball of wax, with this one item number. And it sounds like a lot of money, but when you think about it, when there's two sets of dies and two stamp sets and a full pack of designer series paper, a full pack of two ribbons, the gilded gems. I mean, it's just there's so much that comes in it. It's just a fantastic deal. So, um, these are the two bundles and their stamp sets. So, this is the ornate thanks, and it's got thank you, so grateful, thanks, and then there's like little things that would go underneath it, like for everything, ever so much, seriously, my friend. Um, and then some flowers. These are some great border dies, and I think these little ones over here are gonna be super useful for anything. And then these frames, and they come with the stitched die and the little ornate die that goes around it. But for our box, because the cards were kind of little, I actually used this little frame because the word thanks will fit right in the middle. So, okay, I made lots of little notes. And this is what I got started with. So we're gonna start out needing a piece of cardstock that is 12 inches by 10 inches. And I scored it, but you couldn't really see it on camera. So I went back with a light pencil and then went over it so you guys could see exactly where things are cut. And I'll make up a little diagram you know, on the computer and I'll put it on my blog post but I wanted you guys to be able to see as we're working on this. Now, from when we start out, you're gonna start out on the short side and you're gonna put it in your trimmer. So this is the 10 inch across this way and we're gonna score it at one and a half. So you're gonna line it up at one and a half, score. That's gonna be with the tan blade. Then we're gonna go three and we're gonna score all the way top to bottom seven and then eight and a half. So you come over here to that one and then we would do this one. So you can see how I have those lines going. This is the only confusing part, don't freak out. But when we start scoring, 
we're going to score from the bottom up. So again, we're going to go, this is the long 12 inch side. I'm going to go from the bottom and I'm going to score at two and a quarter. But I'm only going to this third line. So we're going to score up to seven inches down to the bottom. You follow me? Then we're going to come over and we're going to go three and three quarter. And again, only to that third line. Seven and three quarter. And then nine and one quarter. Now, without moving it, because I the first time I did it, I flipped it so that I could score up from the bottom. It did not work. What we want to do is we want to now score from the top. So this was from the bottom. That's the score lines we're doing. Now we're going to go down from the top. And so we've got some new measurements. And so I'm going to move this over. Again, don't freak out. But we're going to go two and three sixteenths. I know sixteenths. I hate them. But the basic gist is we're going to take where we did the two and a quarter and we're going to go over one more of these little teeny tiny lines. And all that's doing is scoring. Actually, it's going to be the other way. It's going to be inside. So this one's going to be just a titch off when we score this one. So that's going to be the two and three sixteenths, and then we're going to go three and eleven. Now again, you can count. Each one of those lines is going to be one sixteenth. So we know that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would be your middle. So eight sixteenths is your half. Then you're going to say nine, ten, and eleven. So it's just under the three and three quarter. And what that's doing is this little distance of that 1 16th inch, right in here, it's like the lines are just basically misaligned. And that's because this part's going to be your top, and we want it to be able to fold down and cover up the bottom. So these two are just outside, and these two are just outside the other direction. Is that making sense? So we did our score lines at two and three sixteenths, three and eleven sixteenths, seven and thirteen sixteenths, and nine and five sixteenths. Again, I'll put these measurements on my blog post, don't get confused, but just know when you're doing it that these are a little to this side and these are a little to this side, just this top part. Does that make sense? Let me know if you have any questions. Of course, you can always message me if you're watching this after the fact. So then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our scissors. Now, keeping in mind that's the top, I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut out these two squares at each corner. It's all easy from here, I promise. Okay, so that was the next step as I just removed the four corners. Now what we want to do is we want to make these flaps. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in this way and I'm going to snip up to the edge. But then after I've snipped, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to snip just a titch over. So what I did was this part I'm removing, this is the score line. So I went right on the edge of the score line here and right on the edge of the score line here to move to remove this part. And that's just going to make it a little easier when we fold everything together. Now I realize I'm going a little slower than normal, but I don't want you guys to get confused on this. Again, you guys tend to think things are a little bit hard, but they're not if you just take it slowly and you understand why we're doing things. So now I want to come back in and I just want to burnish these. So I'll bring in a bone folder. That's another thing my husband's new machine is going to be able to do 
is we're going to be able to do engraving onto the bone folders like this and onto blocks like this. So fun machine. I am so excited. I've been paying for these for my team. Yeah. And now we can do them ourselves. Okay. And of course I'm going to hire them out if any of you guys want tumblers or blocks or, you know, whatever. Now I've got the pencil lines in there that you guys, you know, probably won't do. I mean, you might do them, but I doubt it. And if I wanted to, I could go back in and erase them, but they are going to be on the inside. So I don't know that I'm all that worried about it. But if any of them show, they'll just come off with, a, um, with an eraser. Okay. So now we have all of our pieces. And again, I marked the top because this is the one that had a little bit extra because I want it to be able to fold over the top. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna fold these two in from the bottom and we're gonna put some liquid glue on it. Again, I use liquid glue when I need a little bit of wiggle room because I wanna make sure that my box is actually square. So I'm gonna come in and just attach it and then I'm gonna futz with it and just make sure that I think everything's square before it totally dries and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the top so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue you don't need much a little too much glue is gonna actually warp your paper so don't use too much now, I want the bottom to be my base. So now I just need a little bit of glue here and here, and we're gonna glue them to the sides. Now this box was designed by Amanda Charlesworth. She's in the UK, she's another Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and she did this with the Magnolia, the Good Morning Magnolia, and the Magnolia Lane designer series paper. It's really pretty. So again, a totally different look with the same fold. And she says she came up with it on her own, so I am giving her credit. Sometimes we don't know where things come from. We've all shared them so many times that you kind of lose track of who was the initial idea. But she says it was her, so she goes by Scrimping Mommy. Okay, so again, I'm keeping track of my top although I can probably remove that now. And then I'm gonna bring in my little decorating pieces. These are for decorating the box. I have these two pieces that are gonna go on the top and the front that are four inches by one and three eighths. And then the two sides here are one and three eighths by one and three eighths. Now, when I did this one, it was a little more confusing because it was directional. So I had to make sure when I was cutting the sides that instead of taking the three and seven eighths, which is right here, and moving it over here, I had to turn it 90 degrees so that my herringbone was all going the same directions. So if you have a choice, pick a designer series paper that doesn't have directions. It'll make it so much easier on you. Now, this has got the 1 8 inch border. If you wanted to, you could go with a quarter inch. It would be a little wider. Um, I know people are afraid of those eighths of an inch and sixteenth of an inch, but try not to be. You just, just count. Go along the, the little ruler and count how many little hatch marks, and it will all be fine, I promise. It takes a little getting used to, but once you get it, it does give a pretty look to have those skinny borders. So there's the decoration on our lid. Now I'm going to decorate the bottom. So for the back, it's three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And then I have three pieces that are three and seven eighths by one and three eighths. 
So these three are all the same size. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, this, Amanda Charlesworth in the UK came up with the fold. Okay, so now I have my piece. This is the three and seven eighths, which is gonna be exactly what we need here. And one door is a little bit larger than the other so that they overlap. So one of these is gonna be two and five eighths and two, and the other is two and one eighth. Now they're eighths are always halfway between the two lines. So five eighths is gonna be just a little over the two and a half. So now we're done with our box. See, so not really that complicated, but a really cool design. And then we would just tie a ribbon around it for the bow, but let's make our cards for the inside. So I made six note cards and I just chose three of the colors that were used in the designer series paper. You guys know that anytime you turn over the designer series paper and look at the back, they're going to show you all the colors they used. And so I chose the Poppy Parade, Bumblebee, and Old Olive, and I did two of each. Each card is seven and a half by three and three quarter and then they're scored at three and three quarter. So that makes it three and three quarter square. And then she had actually done these at three and five eighths, but I did them at three and a half because I'm trying not to give you guys too many eighths. Um, so this will have a little bit wider border. This is three and a half by three and a half. If you want the skinnier border, it's three and five eighths. But then we just choose which ones we want to go on which cards. Kind of an eeny, meeny, miny, mo kind of thing. Because they all look beautiful together. And then you can decorate them, you know, any way you want. You can put an inside to the card. You can, you know, leave the inside blank. Um, you can stamp on the inside. I think the flower would be really pretty. You could stamp this, you know, on the inside, right in the corner, maybe even use the little corner designs, you know, stamp that in a corner, It'd be really pretty. So you would just cut the inside three and a half by three and a half as well. And this one uses Whisper White as the neutral. And I decided to make them little thank you notes so I'm going to use the thanks and these little frames that I had die cut using the ornate frames dies. This is a perfect example of when you want to use the precision base plate. If you have our old Big Shot machine, there was a special base plate that was used for the detailed dies. Um, the new machine's coming. I'm really excited about that. Um, I get to order mine in just a couple weeks. Uh, but I used the, the plate, and then I also, when I fed it through the machine, you know, as I was going through, I tried to keep it towards the edge because in the big shot, it's tighter on the edges than it is in the middle. So the first couple, when I ran them through this way, the middle was kind of really hard to get out but when I ran it this way and put it either on the left or the right side of the roller, being closer to the roller got me a much better cut. Also, I used the die brush to get all the little tiny pieces out. And it got almost all of them. You know, I went back with this end and got the rest. But this is one of those situations where the die brush is gonna be really handy. And it does come with a little foam piece underneath it. So the foam piece holds onto all the little parts that popped out. Now we can either cut a little piece to go in the middle. There is a die where we could use that. Or I can come in and just stamp in the same color. Sometimes we forget that. I almost always stamp on just a neutral piece but we can stamp in the same color. So what I did here is I laid my 
stamp down on the grid lines and then I lined my block up on the grid lines and then that's gonna keep me straight, hopefully. All right, fingers crossed. And I can do the same with this. Now our grid paper is something that you can buy. It is available in the store. I highly recommend it. So I think it still works. It may have had a little more pop if we had used a neutral in there, but this works. I like it. Every once in a while I try to step outside my comfort zone and do something a little bit different. Like the fact that these cards are three and three quarter by three and three quarter, that's some, not something I normally do. Okay, now over here I have my Stampin' Scrub and so I'm using my Stampin' Mist and then rubbing it on the wet side and then on the dry side before I go to the next color. And so it did remove most of that red. Because the bumblebee is a lighter color. And we wouldn't want to get red ink onto our bumblebee pad. Okay, now you could choose to glue them down on the front of the card flat, or we can pop them up on dimensionals. And again, we can mix and match the colors. Yeah, <laughs> grid paper is very helpful. And also, this one has the flowers on it, but the one, our normal grid paper, has a measuring tape across the bottom I use quite often too. It's great for measuring out your ribbon. I think they look a little bit blank because the design is so ornate. I think they need a little bit more. So I'm gonna come back in with some little pearls. Now I have the white ones that you can color. If you have the Stampin' Blends, you can color them to any color Stampin' Blend you have. These ones came out of a little paper pumpkin kit. They're already colored. Let's go ahead and use those since they are the colors we're using. So this is where I would take off my dye brush and put on the little putty end. So I'm just randomly placing some little pearls. So again, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so all of the supplies I'm using are Stampin' Up! related. You can purchase them in my online store. When I'm done with these videos for Facebook Live, I do edit them and move them over to my YouTube channel. So you might want to make sure that you're a subscriber over there. And then if you're on my blog, you will see the blog post for when I post these finished. And it, while you're on the blog, you're going to want to sign up for the newsletter because that's where I inform you of sales that are going on and specials Stampin' Up! is having. Like right now we're doing bonus days, which is where if you spend $50 in July, they're going to give you a $5 coupon for each $50 spent that you can use in August. So it's kind of like getting a 10% that you can use later. So there's my little note cards, and they're going to fit in my box. And then this is the new in-color ribbon. This is the Bumblebee ribbon. Now I have a glue dot in the end because Whenever I start a roll and they start unraveling on me, it drives me bananas. So I put the glue dot so that I can keep it from unraveling in my drawer. If you want to keep it from unraveling on your pat on your project, you might want to burn the ends with a lighter and just melt them. It'll keep the ribbon from unraveling. And so there we go. There's our two little boxes. <laughs> so, thank you for joining me. I appreciate those of you who join me each Monday at 2.30 Mountain Time to go over my Facebook Live. It's kind of a free online class. I also have paid online classes if you're interested in that as well. Um, I do offer the classes for free if you order the materials that you need for the class from me. Like if I do a, stand, a, a class around one of the bundles, 
then if you buy that bundle from me, then you get the class for free. The class has a Facebook group where I post the PDF, the YouTube video, and pictures of all of the projects. So you can go in there at your leisure and um, find all the directions. I also have a customer appreciation PDF that those of you who order from me, uh, if you place at least a $30 order, then you get the customer appreciation PDF, which has instructions for six different cards. So again, I thank you for joining me and I hope to see you back here next Monday at 2.30 Mountain Time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.